Uh, that's a really good question. Uh, Pilikowski is how most people say it. And how it's the right way. My in-laws will say that it's Pilikowski, but I generally okay. say Pilikowski because it's just easier. So Pilikowski is fine. Will do. Oh, how's everyone doing? I'm great, Melissa. I just wanted to jump in and say thanks for joining us uh, from Nebraska. You jumped right on in the early and just stuck with this thing all the way through and have really been doing a phenomenal job uh, helping us get this thing up and running. So I am super appreciative of your efforts. I just, uh, I really, thanks a lot. Thanks a oh, lot. Oh, gosh, absolutely. I'm just honored that I can help do this. I'm going to share in just a second. I just, I wanted to post the URL in the chat yeah, in case anybody wants to follow along that way. Okay, and we are uh, live on YouTube also. We even have our first person watching that number. I'll quickly, quickly climb. I love seeing the familiar faces. Yay. And if anybody wants to put that URL, that link on YouTube, feel free. I've been putting it on Twitter, so it's by no means proprietary. Yeah, Frederick, if you can take care of that, I'll also make you a moderator in the chat for the video on YouTube so that you get a little wrench by your name. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, of course. I know Sean really enjoyed seeing the wrench by his name. I was just going to mention the fact that I, I liked getting a wrench. I was just, I thought, uh, I don't want to get into it. But anyway, I was really excited to get a wrench. <laughs> Fair enough. I, I just it threw looks like um, those carry over too. So we have a whole bunch of moderators on our channel now. I know, I saw that. A Ooh. growing organization. Ongoing concern. So, um, Melissa, at, at about mm -hmm. one, I'll say stuff. Sounds great. Like uh, announcing you, and then I probably won't say another word unless there's a pressing issue. Okay. Yeah, by all means, if things get crazy and there's questions, I'm going too fast. Stop me. I'll, I'll just remind them that it's being recorded and they can watch it at half speed if they want. So, <laughs> <laughs> you, you do you, and I'll just okay. try to keep uh, the shots away from you. And with it being all linked up, anybody can come back to it anytime if they want to go through at their own pace and just have me yapping in the background. More power to them. I should have put a bit.ly on this title slide. I didn't think about that. That's what I usually do, but. Oh, goodness. How many sessions have you guys taught so far today? Started at 8 a.m. 
every hour on the hour. Would it help to know that there's 131 people watching here and 13 on YouTube? Fantastic. That's exciting. I just yeah. hope everyone today gets even just a couple of things that they can take away or that inspires them that they're like, oh yeah, I could do this and this and take something, modify it, make it your own. Robin, this is third today, fourth today from Carlene. All Yay. right. Way to go, MN, MN Deal Summit. John's trying to hit them all. Abby, third overall, first today. <laughs> fourth, yeah. I was going to get in a lot more today, and then I realized this. I was still trying to put finishing touches on the presentation, so I have got to go back and watch a few. All right, I guess it's one o'clock. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Frederick Ballou. I'll be the moderator. So please remember to mute your mic and add any questions here on the chat, either on YouTube or if you're in on Zoom. And uh, if you're running into any tech issues, feel free to click the YouTube live link that I'll throw up here in a second. But right now we're gonna let Melissa Pilikowski take it away. Thanks, Frederick. Uh, and thank you for being here to moderate because it's always so, I don't know, exciting, but overwhelming uh, with doing online presentations. And this is one of my favorite topics, a billion or so, it's approximately a billion or so things to do with Google Slides. I first made this presentation like four or five years ago, and this is completely new because Google Slides is so versatile. The uses have just exploded in the past few years. So I'm gonna share some of my favorite things about Google Slides today, and hopefully everyone can at least take two or three things away with them of ways that you can modify it, make it work for your classroom and or distance learning. There we go. Okay, so first of all, just a little bit about me because it helps to have some context about who the who I am. Uh, I teach English language arts uh, now mainly to juniors and seniors in very northern Nebraska. And we live in a very rural area. Uh, my husband is a cattle rancher. We raise purebred Angus. And I also just do a lot with technology because I think it's just the easiest way to kind of have this constructivist classroom that I have where students can have a lot of student choice. And that's why I really embrace technology. And you can see there's my family and some other pictures. Okay, so first we're just gonna take a minute to do a check-in and this is something that you can do right with google slides if you want i've modified it because we're on zoom right now so in the zoom chat type in just a one two three four one being you're like ron burgundy where you're amazing two it's chaotic that you're doing good three and eh, i'm okay and four help me This is something I did with my students just a couple of weeks ago. I like to do it about once a week just to get a sense of where they are. And if you do this in Google Slides, it's really easy to do if you're on Nearpod or Pear Deck because you can do it a little bit more anonymous, anonymously, uh, but you could do it right in class if you wanted to get a feel for how well students know content and just have them raise a hand one, two, three or four for whichever meme works for them. Okay, lots of twos, a few threes, one 3.5 and some fours. Yay, Leslie, help me. I think we've definitely all been there during this chaotic time of just a surreal feeling of what we're going through. All right. 
So in our agenda today, I have all of these techniques split up into four different categories. First, content delivery and practice, which is probably what most people think of when we think of Google Slides or PowerPoint. But then I want to show you some different student creation activities beyond just you know, creating a slide deck. And then ways to use Google Slides for planning and reflection and also to celebrate student work and student learning. If at any time you have questions, please post them in the chat and hopefully there'll be some time at the end that we can do a question answer session as well. So one of the ways that I use Google Slides is to do it as a form of HyperDoc work. And this is really common to use HyperDocs with Google Word, but you can also use it with Google Slides as long as you're using Google Classroom and then that way you can make a copy for everyone. So this is an assignment that I did with my students a couple of months ago. We were working with bias in the news and it was kind of a half on their own assignment, but I started it off with synchronous time during class where we did some talking about what is bias. We did some examples. And then students went off on their own and they did some analysis of some Fox News headlines, of some MSNBC headlines, because a lot of students don't even realize kind of the difference between those two. And then choice is so, so important. So I always try to have choice somewhere in every assignment. So in this one, this was available for them to go out and what sites do they usually use? And so they could go and choose their own source here. And then I need to get back to my, there we go. When you check work, a little hack is I don't go into Google Classroom to check student slide decks. I actually just go to Google Drive. And then if you click the I icon, which is preview, you can then just preview all of the student slides and Google has updated that you can now just leave comments when you're in the preview version. So that's another way to save time from your computer having to upload slides all of the time. And so that's one way to use Google Slides with by using a HyperDoc, students can have some choices and also have control over their pacing. You can also use Google Slides to present an entire unit. And I really like doing this for my writing units because it allows all of the students to have the resources all in one place. Because if you teach, if you, any, ELA teachers out there, when you teach writing, it just, there's so much that goes into a writing unit. So I like to keep all of the slides together so that that way students can always go back to check for information. So this is the slide deck that I use for my argument unit. And on most of the slides, I have a little icon that looks like this, and this links it to the sample model paper. So no matter what slide they're on, students always have access to that model paper. So they're not going back to look through the slides, trying to find the sample. There we go. And then with every single day, which I organize my classes or my units, by a code word, in this case, case 004 is the number for that assignment. And then it has the information that they need. If they have links that they need, it has links. There's links to the rubric there, links to introduction topics. And it's really nice just to have everything in one slide deck. And then especially later on, if you have information about so you're giving feedback about structuring up your paragraph and your kids are throwing in quotes, but they're not setting them up. I can just take the URL from this particular slide, copy and paste it into the comments next to their writing, and then they can just go directly to this slide and get this information. 
So that's another of my Google slide hacks is to keep, especially my writing units all just on one slide deck and in one place. You can also set up self paced units. And this is nice, especially if you have just a short mini unit, or if you're going to be gone for two or three days, you can set up different slides for students to slowly progress through over the course of three days to a week. I wouldn't, personally, I wouldn't go much longer than that just because my students struggle with having too much time available, especially if I'm gone. But when I do this, I also like to give it some type of theme. So. For example, on this unit, I did Mission Impossible theme. So I tried to create every page or every slide of that deck with some type of spy theme and also create a little bit of a storyline to it to add a little gamification feel to it. And if you wanna see more information or see some links into these units, I put in a link to my blog right there. Uh, next, if you haven't played with this, this is such a great hack that you can do in Google Drawing or you can do it in Google Slides. I like slides because then that way every student can have their own. You can put these all into one slide deck or you can share them out and make a slide deck for every student within your Google Classroom. And it's magnetic poetry. But you can use it even if it's not a poetry unit, you, I use it when we do vocabulary. Because a lot of times when students have to write sentences or writing and work in vocabulary, it can be a little bland and sometimes it can be overwhelming. So by making students write, write sentences that have vocab words using this format, it seems to lessen the stakes a little bit. It's a little bit more playful because they can just move words around. What I did was I made vocabulary words just in text boxes and I turned those pink. And then I have kind of some adverbs and articles in the yellows and then verbs in green, nouns in blue. And I just throw in random ones, as well as Mr. Cronin is our principal, Bebout is our geography teacher and uh, football coach. And then a lot of times I'll throw in words of just inside topics from school. Uh, Uncrustables one year was just our students' favorite snack, so I've got an Uncrustable in there. There's also a long inside joke about the principal who burned a Hot Pocket and almost burned down the school. So a lot of times I have hot pockets stuck in there. And then I can go around, check what sentences the students are doing, give them just one-on-one -on -one tips for adjustments they need to make. And they can also just do this in small groups too. And it works for all kinds of content. It doesn't have to be English language arts. It can be any content where you have some vocabulary words. But I also do vocab sentences. I like to do these in Pear Deck. If you use Nearpod, that's just as awesome. You could also do this with students if you made, each made if they each had their own slide deck in Google Classroom and they could write their sentences into the notes. Again, love student choice. So what I do is give them two columns, one column with the vocabulary words in it, one column with just some other random words in it, and then say, choose one word from each column, put them together in a sentence. So kids have to do a lot of creativity, kind of problem solving of finding the right context. And this is a great, activity for differentiating for your higher level learners too, because you can challenge them by saying, well, I mean, you could do more than two words a sentence. And you're going to have some of those kids that try to put four, five, even all six words into a sentence or into a short paragraph. So this is just an easy way to get 
kids using new terms, new vocabulary. Uh, also a great bell ringer at the beginning of class or an exit ticket at the end of class to kind of wrap up what you've been learning about today. So those are kind of the more traditional direct instruction -y content delivery ideas. But Google Slides has a lot of potential for students to create. And I want to show kind of some ideas that I've had students use in the past to create using Google Slides. This is my newest favorite one. And I'd love to say that I came up with this idea, but I didn't. It actually came from my doctoral advisor. And he didn't want us doing written reflections. He wanted us to do this visual reflection where we could collage any images, pictures, colors, video to create kind of our summary and ideas about our reading. And I thought, gosh, you know, what a great idea to use just in the classroom. So that's what I decided to do for my students' independent reading. Instead of having just reading responses, what they did was they created book slides. And so the one you can see on the screen right now, that's obviously Fahrenheit 451. Uh, I do have a sample slide deck connected so you can see how I set this up, some of the parameters that I gave the students so that they had some ideas too of what they could include. I'm gonna flip through some of these just to show some ideas of what students have created. Um, sorry, sorry to interrupt, yes. but the, the link from your slide deck that is the example, you need permission to view. Oh, yep, I can see it right now. All right. Thank you for pointing that out. Let me get into there. I was afraid I was going to have at least one that I forgot to double check. Okay, so it should be open. You may need to refresh your screens. And I always provide this my students with the objective of you know, you want to recreate what the mood is, what the tone is of your book. And then these are the directions that I give them. And I try to keep at least some type of boundaries. I have, you know, it has to have the name of your book and it has to have seven components. Now, what those seven components might be is completely up to the student. So I have some of the ideas down here. Now, this could work for any type of reading, any type of research that you're having students do. Uh, this could be just even a very short one day assignment of looking up some sort of science topic or history topic and having students kind of jigsaw their knowledge together based on the research, a form of crowdsourcing. So this has really been one of my probably very favorite uses of Google Slides just this year. Did I skip one? No, okay. Another really easy one is Ignite Speeches. I like doing this kind of at the end of the year. It's a way to keep my seniors busy in a way. And I have them do a last lecture. and. If you're not familiar with Ignite speeches, Ignite speeches are exactly five minutes. They're exactly 20 slides long. Ideally, they're supposed to advance every 15 seconds. And so as my seniors, one of their final assignments is to leave a message for the incoming freshmen. You know, what advice would you give them as a senior looking back? So Google Slides makes a great platform to do that, where you can just tell them, hey, you have to have 20 slides. You can talk about what a good slide looks like, of how you don't want to have it inundated with text. You can see some of my uh, student samples here from a couple of years ago. What they also did was they uploaded slides to Adobe Spark and then recorded their messages too. So you can also do that option as well. And that can, again, be about any topic or any type of content area. Um, there 
was a question in the chat because mm -hmm. in this kind of fits in. Um, if you were to say, look at their slide deck from Drive, how would you leave a comment when in, it's in preview mode? Could you demonstrate that for us? Yeah, let me see if I can do that. Hey, hey. get to a spot where I have some, oh, is it not gonna do this now? Well, I just did it earlier, but I did it on my Chromebook and now I'm on my Mac. Can I get back to you on that? I will put that, I will add that to a final slide at the end of the slide deck. I might have to look at that after the session is over and figure what I'm doing wrong. No worries. It was okay. just a. Yeah, thing. absolutely. Ha, huh, now that's going to bother me. I'm sorry. Gosh darn it. Uh, another activity that uh, students can do, and again, you can do this based on your own content area. Uh, one of my friends, Matt Farber, when he was still in the classroom, he did this with his middle school students in history, and they did kind of alternative histories. What if some of our leaders would have made different decisions? What would that have looked like? And they created a choose your own copyright prevents us from saying adventure, so choose your own journey projects. And that's something that you can set up in Google Slides. These are a few that uh, some of my seniors a few years ago did. We had just a week before Christmas and we had finished everything that I had planned. And so we got out a lot of butcher paper one day, they mapped out their whole storyline and then they put it into Google Slides. So it was a great writing activity, but it's also a great kind of computational thinking activity when you have to transfer it from the butcher paper to the Google Slides and problem solving how that's all going to work. There's also a few teachers out there who create choose your own journey uh, eBooks and kind of textbooks for a unit. So that's another route that you could do if you have some content that maybe isn't very exciting. You can create a create your own journey ebook with it and students can interact with your content content that way. I also like to use Google Slides as a way to create graphic organizers for my students writing but also for them to complete those graphic organizers right on slides. I like it for two reasons. One, it's easier for me because when I have that file open, I can just scroll through that, take a quick look at everyone's, leave notes if I need to. But it's really beneficial for the kids too, especially kids who are struggling with figuring out how they're going to organize their information. It gives them a chance to look at other students and see how they're setting up their organization. Or sometimes students will see information or a perspective that they hadn't considered before and go, oh, and you know, it's just a great sharing activity where students don't have to be out on an island by themselves, that they can be working on their own work, but still have everyone else as a model and a guide for them as well. And then I think this is the last one in this section. Another quick activity that you can do with students, especially if you wanna get them out researching just a little bit is to do a crowdsourcing activity. Uh, I do this when we're getting into research with my college composition students. 
and I have them go out and find some research tips, whether they are tech tips or whether they are writing tips and then create a slide and then they have to do just a quick presentation of what they found. So then we have students who talk about written notes. Um, I had students who present the Hemingway app. Some get really detailed with some of the more obscure tips of searching on Google like Isaac does. And some find just other proofreading apps that can help them as they go. But again, this doesn't have to be with just writing. This can be as an introduction to that day's topic and you know, give students, you have 10 minutes to put three things onto your slide about X, Y, Z, go. And you could also have students draw out of a hat for what specific topic they need to look up. In the third section, I wanna talk about some ways that you can use Google Slides, not just for content, but also kind of more for those planning skills, whether it's planning on your side and keeping you organized or helping them plan and stay organized and really reflect about what they're learning. So we did the first one right off the top, which you can do really easily. You can do it at the beginning of each class as your bell ringer. You can do it just once a week, but just do a check in with your students. Another idea that I uh, got last semester from my doctoral advisor is to create kind of a matrix heat map like this here. And on the left, these are all of the readings that we had or the activities that we had. And then under our name, we put in the dot of how we were feeling about that reading or activity. Green meaning fantastic, yellow meaning not for sure, red meaning either we didn't get it done or we really struggled with it. And I think this could be modified in a lot of ways. This could be a great end of the unit review when you don't know exactly where you should spend your time on. You could have on the left-hand side, the different concepts or the different topics that you covered in that unit and then have students do a heat map of how comfortable they are with those topics. You could also do it prior to a discussion. If students had a selection of articles that they could read, you can have those articles on the left hand side and then as a heat map have students put in green, yellow or red of how much they're interested in specific articles. And you could also do this in a more fun way by adding emojis instead of just colored circles and have students paste in those emojis too. There was a question in the mm -hmm. chat. Um, do you create the table within the slide or create it in a Google doc and then copy and paste? I create it just within the slide. Okay. I mean, and you then... can... You could sure do it in a Google Doc and copy and paste if that's, you know, do what's comfortable for you by all mm -hmm. means. Um, but I do it just right in that slide. And then do other students see what others are feeling or do you put this together? Which I, goes along with the same thing. And yeah. then someone asked, you, you said you do it right in the slide. How is this created? So I just, create it via making a table right there. And then you can either put emojis or put the dots up in the left-hand corner where students can copy paste those. For sure. Mm -hmm. um, if you didn't want to share student names or if you didn't want students to know what each other was saying, one thing that I do and I do this especially when we do peer reviewing of writing is at the beginning of the year, every student has a magic number. There's nothing magic about it, but it's 001, 002, all the way up and it's completely random. And that's just their number through the year. So through the year, if they're 014, then whenever we do a peer review or whenever I need to code something and keep it secret, then I just use that number of 014. And if you 
wanted to, you wouldn't even have to do Google Slides with this. You could also do this just within a Google form. You could set it up on a Google form and then look at the spreadsheet of that too, if you wanted to really ensure that anonymity. So it's kind of a, depends on your students and how comfortable they are with sharing and also maybe with the topic too. You know, if you're asking about their mental health that day, that might not be something that you would want to do on the Google slide. But as for comfort with the content area, might be something that's easier for you if it's just right on that slide. Any other questions you're seeing? There was, there was one more that was about how do you keep the kids or your students from editing peer slides? I, I typed in trust that you just trust they're not going to do it. But um, then someone added revision history. So you can see who's changed uh -huh. what. Uh-huh. Um, and that's something, it's such an excellent point. And before we do any activity on Google Slides, and especially that very first one early on in the year, you have to have that conversation and say, hey, you have, remember you have the power to accidentally, and then I always add not that any of you would do it, um, but you know, accidentally delete someone's slide or change someone's slide. So one, be careful. And then two, I always tell them, remember, I can go back in the version history and see who did what. They don't realize it's kind of a pain sometimes to do that if there's 20 of them on there, but they don't need to know that. And so I don't usually have problems, but again, that's something depending on the class. I've definitely had classes in the past where I would probably need to make a different slide deck for each student in Google Classroom. And then if I wanted to collate them together, I would have to collate them together. So, you know, that's a lot of culture building and some, some years I get it that you get students where that just doesn't happen. All right, moving on, uh, you can also use Google Slides for self-evaluations. If you are one of those moving away from grades or at least grading less and focusing on the standards more, this is a slide deck that I set up for each of my students just for one unit at a time where I have four or five slides and each slide has that standard has what's expected for them with that standard. And then on the right-hand side is where they put in one, two, three, or four. Where do they see themselves on that standard? And then below is where I can give them feedback, whether I agree with them or whether I have some advice of how to help them continue learning. So you can also use slides as a way to boost students' metacognition. And you could expand this more if you wanted to by adding a full table and once a week having students do a quick reflection on how they're doing on that standard. This is a slide deck that I'm actually using right now. My juniors are finishing up their multi-genre projects and both as a way for me to stay organized, but also as a way for them to stay organized. I set up this Google slide deck where each of them had a slide that showed one, their proposal part, which was the table at the top. And then below was the set of deadlines that I had for each, for all of the students for each of their writings. And then that's where they were able to link the Google Doc that they created, or since some of them were creating pieces of writing in PictoChart or creating timelines, they could just paste those right in there. And then once a week, when I go in to give feedback to students, I can come back to their slide, click on the link, and then look at their reading there. I also have something similar that I did with my seniors. And I have that linked up on my blog. So if you wanna take a look at that one, it's a little bit different, but you could take a look at that one, maybe get some other ideas that way too. Uh, but 
I'm not the most organized person. So having a slide deck helps me stay organized a lot better when you have kids doing, if you have 39 kids doing 39 different projects, it's a good just kind of cornerstone that you can keep coming back to. My next idea I got last year at Summer Spark from Brian Durst, and it's super fun way to start the year and get to know your students is by having them create student profiles. So each of my students created a profile where they added in their own avatar and I gave them some places that they could go to to create their own avatar. Some of them wanted to use their Bitmoji, which was great. And then they shared kind of what their writing powers were, their writing weaknesses. And my favorite part, they each got to choose a walk-up song from YouTube because I love the fact that you can embed YouTube videos and then have that video start just at the exact place you want it to start. So then when we did these presentations, I of course played their walk-up video for them as they walk up and do their presentation. And you can reuse this again and again if you have a classroom where you do do multiple presentations throughout the year and you can always play that student's walk-up song. How are we doing on time? About 10 Fantastic. minutes. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. 10. Okay, so I'm going to try and wrap this up in the next five or six minutes. That'll leave just a few minutes for questions and you can still contact me at any time for more questions. A lot of times we forget about celebrating students work and celebrations are so important to recognize new students and making them feel like their work is more than just submitting it to the teacher, getting a grade and getting it back, but that they are sharing it out to other, other audiences. And Google Slides is, the, is an easy way to do that because each slide also has its own URL. This first idea was one I just saw on Facebook this week because Kevin Honeycutt is amazing. And he actually did this in Google Drawing, but anything you do in Google Drawing, you can pretty much do in Google Slides too. And instead of the traditional portfolio idea where each slide has a link to student work, on this one, he has you know, different images, he has the QR codes, and then there's also PNGs of trophies off on the sides. And I think that this would be such fun as a wrap up at the end of the semester project, wrap up at the end of the year project to create instead of a portfolio, but create kind of a trophy case. And you could use QR codes or you could simply turn your images, turn pictures into links in Google Slides and each student could have that trophy case. And I think that would be something that would work great for a lot of levels, whether it be middle elementary all the way up through high school. And especially if they can take pictures of their art projects. I've got lots of guys who have automobile projects, welding projects, construction projects, a great way for them to show those off digitally. A few years ago, I came up with this idea and it's celebrating golden quotes. And it's the idea that in every student writing, there's some really, really great lines. So what I started doing was just printing off some student writing. It was easier for me to print, but you could probably do this digitally too. And then and I would turn them all over on a table and another student, all of the students would come and grab one of them kind of like secret Santa in a way. And they read through their colleagues writing and they had to pick out one or two sentences that they considered to be golden, that just had great imagery and was just loved the way that they sounded. And then create a slide for that sentence. So this is one for that Brooks wrote, and these values will follow me wherever I go and will certainly guide me as I begin my future career. 
And then I don't remember which student created the slide, but they picked out the background image. They're in charge of the font. They're in charge of the colors. And we talk about using those decisions to reflect the mood and tone of that writing. And then that is one that I make a different slide deck for each student so that no one sees the slides that other students are doing. And then I spend about an hour or so collating all of those slides into one slide deck. And then on some Friday, I usually have allowed them to bring in snacks and we have a celebration day and we watch this video and it's so much fun to watch students just waiting for their slide to come up because they're wondering what quote did they pick what's their quote going to look like and then i've also some years shown this on honors night out in the hallway so when parents are walking through they can stop and watch through and watch their students' writings flash by on the screen. So it's a great way to celebrate, not just in the classroom, but you can also just turn it into a published slide deck, share it on your school's social media, share it just at your school's honor tonight. And I think this is, oh, that, that is my last one. So I wanna talk, oh, I clicked something I didn't think I was going to click, but that's okay. What some people don't know about Google Slides is that you can change your slide size to be whatever you want. So you can change your slide to be eight and a half by 11 and then download your slide deck as a PDF and then ship it off to publish as a hard copy. And I meant to grab a couple to show that's okay. Uh, this is the hard copy that we created last year. This is the cover of it. If you click on the link, I think that will take you into that file. And what I do is I create some template pages for the kids just so that there's some consistency throughout. And students copy and paste their work in. They bring in pictures from home or they find pictures that are uh, copyright free online they design their pages and then I bring all the pages together, download it as a PDF. And then usually every year for their graduation gift, they have a handheld magazine copy of one of their favorite pieces of writing from that year. And it's super easy to do. I've done it even just taking pictures of their work and then turning those images into a magazine like this. So it doesn't necessarily have to be writing. It can be any type of uh, work that students do that you can just take pictures of. And just in the last few minutes, I wanted to leave just a few minutes of time if for one questions, but two, by no means do I have an exhaustive list of everything you can do on Google Slides. And if somebody has got some great suggestions that they use, I'd love to hear them. So Frederick, what do you think? Is there anyone, any questions out there or any great suggestions in the chat? Um, someone had asked about revision history, but then you answered it. Okay. So that took care of that. Um, yeah, uh, not, not much in the way of questions right now. It seems like you covered most everything. Um, someone asked, do we get CEU credits for joining these and viewing these? And I'll, I'll throw the Google form up there pretty soon. Uh, someone just asked, Serena asked, do you have any experience with making interactive activities in Google Slides? Like uh, the choose your own adventure type stories. That, that's the one that I probably use the most for being kind of more interactive that way. Right on. And then someone asked, could you show us if you can, like how you would create the choose your own oh, adventure? Sure. Okay, so let me open up a new. By the way, if you ever want to make a new slide deck, just type in slides.new into your URL window. And that's a quick little shortcut. Okay. Let's 
So um, make a choice. Um, um, so we can do listen to more MNDL summit sessions. Or we can do um, take a nap. Don't know why anyone would want to do that second one. Can't so this is going to be just a really basic example. So I'm going to make two more slides here. Take a nap slide and then I'm going to have my um, listen to more sessions slide. So I'm going to take this first choice and I'm going to hyperlink it. A shortcut is command K, but you could also do it the long way and go up to your edit menu. And then the option comes up for slides in this presentation. And so you can go next, it's only gonna give me two. Next slide is the listen to more session slide. So I'm gonna click next and apply. And then I'll do the same with a take a nap. Right now that's the last. Oh, there we go. So there you can see slides one, two, and three as well. Take a nap, apply. And then we're going to go to present. Okay, so say if I want to take a nap, there I have take a nap. And it's good if you're making something a little bit more elaborate that you would have a return to home slide then that one would take you to listen to more sessions. And then this is where you can put more of your content of you know, how your decisions impact what happens next to the storyline. Uh, this would be another possible way that you know, maybe you could do, since especially right now you can't do science experiments, you're a little bit limited on science experiments, you know, this could be a way to create some cause and effect type situations where students could add this or they could add this, what's going to happen. But that's kind of the basic way and you can of course make it much more elaborate and add images and make a slide deck that has 50 or more slides. Uh, but that's the basic of how you kind of set up those links to make that happen. Cool, we're, we're more or less out of time. Um, I'm throwing up the, uh, excuse me, putting up in the chat, uh, the Flipgrid follow-up, which is a great way to asynchronously um, share ideas or thoughts from the session. I'm putting it here and in the YouTube. Um, a lot of people are chiming in saying thank you because this was fantastic. Love, thank um, you. I just hope you guys got, took away one or two things that are gonna help you guys. Absolutely. Um, also, if you scroll back up in the chat, there's the link for the CEUs. Um, so you're welcome to fill that out. And Melissa, it, if you'd like to have an after like Google Hangout Meet Lounge, I have one of those set up if you'd like to do that. I can uh, pop that absolutely. into the chat as well. Why, why don't you pop that in? Absolutely. I will be adding that right now. Here is the link if you'd like oh. to join us in the lounge. Yeah, and Neil, hey, Neil Chalmers, shout out. That's a great idea, creating like a museum view with your Google Slides. All right, Frederick, thank you so much. And everyone, thank you for coming and kudos to Frederick. Thanks for being a great moderator. I could not have done it without you. Oh, I bet you could have, but I, <laughs> I was glad to be here. Thank you much. Have a good afternoon, everyone. Hey, Melissa, Frederick, thanks so much for the great session. Uh, anybody that is in the room, I'm going to be closing out in just a moment. So you want to grab whatever links you need or head over to the MNDLS, MNDL Summit website uh, to be able to grab that same information.